I created 20 teams to match 20 of the ballparks featured in Super Mega Baseball 4. The Boston Charm, Carolina Coasters, Colorado Aviators, Cuba Stars, Tormentas Dominicanas, Hawaiian Islanders, Iowa Corners, Las Vegas Outlaws, Los Angeles Legends, Louisiana Steam, Montreal Monarchs, Motor City Cruisers, New York Money, Okinawa Grapplers, Seattle Sounds, Seoul Tigers, Texas Wranglers, Tokyo Suns, Hardinaros de Venezuela, and the Windy City Wheelers. Here's the franchise setup where I'll take control of my hometown Las Vegas Outlaws. I'll do the shuffle draft where I'll be able to choose players from the Legends League and the Super Mega League. The face of our franchise will be Hurley Bender. When all is said and done, we come away with a balanced roster with a lot of spirited, disciplined, and crafty players. Our closest rival, LA Legends, with a solid rotation and off-the-charts spirited roster. A lot of contact on the Colorado Aviators led by Jackie Slam. Wish I could get a lot of contact with her. Billy the Kid Wagner leads a balanced Texas Wranglers roster. And the face of the contact specialist Iowa Corners roster is Hanley Dexterez. To the Pacific Division, a ton of speed on the Seattle Sounds. Hall of Famer Paul Molitor anchors a solid contact team in the Hawaiian Islanders. Don't know what the Alice Cooper looks about. Joey Bats, the top dog for another offensive powerhouse in the Okinawa Grapplers. And keep an eye on the offensive production of the Tokyo Suns, led by 37-year-old Squinch Toot Whistle. But it's the Seoul Tigers who look to reel in these offensive teams with their defensive expertise. To the Northeast, reliever Durr Neverwalker leads a balanced Windy City Wheelers. Jock Sports brings a lot of power to the power-hitting Motor City Cruisers. The Montreal Monarchs bring the pitching, led by ace Jovito Bulo. The Boston Charm bring the speed. Of course, not from Big Poppy. How fitting he ends up in Boston. Blamo Tamale and Juice Jackson lead the extreme power-hitting New York money. To the Southeast, young stud Elmo Sl Slayer tops off a solid rotation for the Carolina Coasters. Cover athlete Hammer Longballo, a big part of the power-hitting Louisiana Steam. The Cuba Stars can bring some small ball, with youngster Slash trips at the helm. Slip Sauter leads a solid rotation for the Tormentas Dominicanas. And Babe Ruth comes back from the dead to lead Los Jardineros de Venezuela. And speaking of the dead, Say Hey Willie Mays tops the list of available free agents. Game 1 of 162. Opening day at Colonial Plaza. As is customary in baseball, three players from each team meet at home plate and talk a little trash. Tough start for Hurley Bender. It's already 1-0 in the first when former Minnesota twin Justin Morneau takes him out of the park. Guy's not shy about celebrating it either. Two on, two out for Anton Goodwood in the second. Hits it into the left center gap to clear the bases and it's 5-0 Storms. Then it's 21-year Major League veteran Daryl Evren sending one to the left center gap to make it 6-0. Ralph Blue gets us on the board with this solo shot in the top half of the third. You're my boy, Blue, then taunts the Dominican crowd while down 6-1. to one. Hurley Bender still can't get a shutout inning as Flash Evans hits a laser just over the right center wall. Big, tough lift hits a bomb off the top of the Storm's bullpen, but they'd come away with a convincing five-run win, and the rest of the series wouldn't go our way either. 0-3 oh, for our home opener against the Montreal Monarchs. Day baseball at beautiful Red Rock Park. That's Nolan Ryan coming to home plate to talk some shit. One on, no score in the bottom of the second. It's Ralph Blue hitting it out of the park again. That's my boy, Blue. And he seems proud of himself. It's 3-0 in the bottom of the third, and the bases are loaded for Bobby Bash. And he delivers. A line drive along the right field foul line that brings in two more. Whoa, calm down, Johnny. Oh, shit. We get our first win of the year, 7-3. Big Bobby Bash goes 4-4. Four for four. We're four games into the season, and look at the home runs the Boston Charm are hitting out. Meanwhile, we're able to take two out of three from Montreal. Fast forward 19 games into the season, and we're three games below 500. And the Boston Charm have cooled off a bit with the dingers. I didn't restart this league to suck, so I dropped $13 million to bring back from the dead an 18-year-old version of Hall of Fame pitcher Bob Feller. And then he immediately gets rocked by the Louisiana Steam. However, 50 games into the season, and the Outlaws find themselves a game and a half ahead of Texas for first place. And then we sweep them at Red Rock Park, including a five-run come-from-behind 11-inning victory in Game 3. Caps off a stretch where we've won 17 of our last 18 games. 
The Montreal Monarchs cut Nolan Ryan. He's only the second ranked player in the entire league right now. And the Monarchs are seven games above 500. I guess they don't think they can catch New York. The Seoul Tigers are going for it, signing the 20 year old version of Hall of Famer Willie Mays. That, while they're nine and a half games ahead in first with a plus 83 run differential. Game number 75, we're five games ahead in first place and welcome in those Tigers to Red Rock Park. We dominate game one, but then they knock us down on a couple of extra inning affairs, including a six-run comeback in game three. One of these guys has to give up their parking space? Well, Bash could use a little extra walking. Oh, I'm sorry. Final series before the halfway point, and we're headed out to Texas for four games against the Wranglers. Unfortunately, they take our losing streak to four. We do get them in game three, but they clinch the series in game four. However, halfway through, we're two and a half games ahead in first place. Uh, my farts don't smell like jock straps. I'm gonna go ahead and blame it on the chick. Top 10 halfway through. Boozy Doozy Shine leads the league in RBIs. Bobby Bash running away with a strikeouts lead. Our A-plus reliever Matt Gunn leads the league in ERA. Nolan Ryan still leads the league in opponent's batting average. Overall, our pitching staff's doing a decent job, but the hitters could use a little help. So we drop another nine and a half million, pick up the Wizard of Oz. Let's make a run, boys. And 50 games later, we're eight games over 500, but only one game ahead of Texas for first place. Game 131 is the start of a three-game series in Seoul. The possible playoff matchup ends in favor of the Tigers. Game 143 is the rubber match of a three-game series at home against the Wranglers. We get the dub and a two-game lead for first place. The Dominican Storms pick up Nolan Ryan. They've been on a terror, currently with a three-game lead for first in the Southeast Division. Vegas, winners of eight of their last nine with seven to go, but only a three-game lead over Texas for first. The Iowa Corners would love to come to Red Rock Park and play spoiler. They come out strong, but we finish stronger, taking three out of four and maintaining a three-game lead for first. I've only got one sweatband left. Okay, I'll be a gentleman this time. Final series of the year, and we only need one win to clinch the division title. And Bob Feller gets lit up. We managed to come back, but it's not enough. Texas, still alive, needs us to get swept, and they need to sweep Iowa. And game one goes to the Wranglers. Aces going at it in game two against the money. New York gets to Bender quick and never looks back. How about a corner win to get us a division title? A low-scoring affair is a comeback win for the Wranglers. So it comes down to game 162. Win and we're in, lose, and we gotta depend on Iowa. Axel Torque leads off the third trying to hype up our crowd. Didn't work, so he just pops one out of here. His 27th home run of the year. Still in the third, and with two on, Jeb jumps comes up like this. Then launches a moonshot to right center to make it 4 nothing money. Frank Tanana finally gets an out, striking out Blamo Tamale, then acting like he's good. Which brings up Juice Jack. Jackson, the league leader in home runs and RBIs. On one pitch, he takes Tanana out of here. Jackson's 50th homer of the year. Bobby Bash comes up with two on in the third. The ground ball to first, and Jason Giambi throws it into the dirt. Base is loaded for Filet Jones. And he sends this one on a ride. Just over the left field wall, grand slam. Bump bellies for that. One out, nobody on in the bottom of the fifth. Bobby Bash with a bomb ties this thing up at five. That's 28 homers for the league's strikeout leader. The next batter, Filet Jones, sends another one on a ride. Back to back, Jax gives Vegas the lead. Jones at 23 homers on the year. But then leading off the sixth, Matt Williams sends it on a ride and ties this thing right back up. 13 homers on the year for the former A's third base coach. This looks more like the MBLE as Linda Hand doubles off Rita Raconda with one on. Nobody out in the sixth. Brings up Ozzie Smith. And he strikes out on three pitches to a girl. Brings up leadoff man Slapper Glute. He sends this one on a ride back 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 caught at the wall but vegas gets the lead once again nobody out bases loaded in the eighth for axel torque doing his thing and he regains new york's lead with a double in the center off jeff nelson claus degain shuts it down in the ninth and we're left to depend on iowa to beat texas Teams combined for seven home runs. Game 162 for the Wranglers and Corners. Texas knows what's at stake. Beefing up their bullpen with Charlie Best. A corner win, we're in. A Wrangler win, we're out. 
This ballpark surrounded by farms. There's got to be a ton of bugs out here. No score. One out. Bases loaded in the fourth for Toby Hara. And he breaks the scoreless tie, outrunning the potential double play. Leading off the seventh for Iowa, Hanley Dexterez. Gets the corners on the board with this laser shot just over the left field wall. Pinch running for Jack Cracker in the eighth is Emilio Idoya. And he's immediately going to try and steal third. Catcher Tiny Legrand launches it into left field and the Wranglers retake the lead. Not like this. Newly acquired Charlie Best, missing a stripe on his pants, shuts him down in the eighth. Winnie Noel pitches a complete game for Iowa. Best walks Ernie Banks leading off the ninth. And that brings up Hanley Dixterez. And he sends it into the right center gap. Gonna be a double. Runners on second and third with nobody out. For sleeveless Orlando Cepeda. But Charlie will pass on him. So can the confident tiny Legrand make up for that error? The 1-1 pitch is sent into right field. Falls in front of Joven Bambino. One run scores. Two runs score, and the corners send the Outlaws into the postseason. Only eight teams finish the year with a winning record. Only two of the top ten players are participating in the playoffs. What an incredible regular season for Juice Jackson. Bobby Bash striking out nearly 200 times. Windy Wheels cracks the list for most stolen bases. We're about pitching. Hurley Bender and Matt Gunn were my top two picks. Bender led the league in opponents batting average. Nobody on our roster had an ERA near five. Our hitter's doing just enough, and amazingly, we're in the playoffs! The hell is this? The bracket is set, four division champs just like the old days. Slip Sauter versus Don Sutton in game one at Apple Field. A tight, low-scoring battle goes to New York in 10 innings. Hurley Bender taking on 19-year Major League veteran Rick Russell. We don't get to him like the A's in the 89 World Series, but come away with a three-run win. Game two in New York. Nolan Ryan against Purd Lovelorn. Advantage, Ryan early, but the money overcome the four-run deficit. Game two from Seoul. Bob Feller against the late great Vita Blue. And we kill him again. Vegas up 2-0 in the series. The money looked to keep rolling as this series shifts to Colonial Plaza. The change of scenery benefits the Tormentas. Red Rock Park hosting the conference finals. And Vegas, look out, blows out the Tigers. Game four from the Dominican Republic. The Storms, able to even up the series. Can Vegas sweep the only team to win over 100 games? Bring out the brooms to Red Rock Park. Tigers look confident despite the deficit. 1-0 Seoul, 2-on-2 out in the third for Willie Mays. Hits a bases-clearing line drive to right center to make it 3-0 Tigers. 3-1 now as there's 2-on-2 out in the sixth for tough lift. The 2-2 fastball from Steve Bedrosian gets smoked out of here and the Outlaws take the lead. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling to home. Ozzie Smith follows that up with a triple. No over-the-head grab from Willie Mays this time. And Slapper Glute will bring him in on the next at-bat with a single. Top of the seventh, one out. Muffin Studwick with a line drive solo shot off Jeff Nelson. Two on, nobody out in the eighth. Tough lift getting busy again. Just fair. Ozzy Smith's sacrifice fly makes it 7-4. We're still going in the eighth as the bases are loaded for Tino Martinez. The off-speed pitch from Lawrence Wimple is knocked out of here. Grand slam for Martinez. We're looking good for a super mega series berth. Robin Yount just absolutely losing his shit. But his Tigers ain't done. With two outs, Yo-Yo Yamamoto with a three-run shot. Two on for Jim Edmonds shatters his bat. Ricky McFarlane picks it up at the foul line, launches it over the first baseman's head. Two runs score and look out. Then McFarlane walks Frank Battery. Brings up Kobe Kingman and a ton of power. That's enough McFarlane. Bring in the ace Bender. Battery stealing second on the first pitch. Tough lift. Throws him out and Vegas advances. The teams combine for 20 runs and 30 hits. Hell of a night for tough lift. It's Sutton versus Sauter in Game 5 at Colonial Plaza. New York gets to it early and it's too much for the Storms to overcome. The Money look to close it out in 6, but they'll have to do so against Nolan Ryan. As the series shifts to Apple Field. One on, one out for Jason Giambi in the second. First pitch swinging, the ground ball gets just past Mark Ellis 
and Big Juice Jackson's gonna round the bases to put New York on the board first. Johnny Bag's liner to right is just fair, brings in Giambi. Still in the second, and the bases are loaded for Norm Phenomeno. Nolan Ryan sends him packing, already his fifth K of the night. 2-1 now as Robin Yu leads off the 6th. Ties the game with his laser beam off Purd Lovelorn. Still in the 6th and the bases are loaded for Gordon Fruitwell. The Storms attempt a triple steal but Fruitwell bunts the ball foul with 2 strikes. Then Deft Wedhams strikes out Hank Hart and this turns into a dance party. One out, runners at the corners in the 7th for a confident Jeb Jumps. His sacrifice fly off Brad Ziegler gets New York a 3-2 lead. And that's all they'll need. Nolan Ryan struck out 11, but it wasn't enough. Las Vegas versus New York in the Super Mega Series. The money get to Bender early and hold off the comeback. Bob Feller starting Game 2 with a 0.0 ERA. Keeps it there for a while, then a back-and-forth affair ends in favor of Vegas. Series shifts to Red Rock Park. New York erases a five-run deficit, and we overcome a three-run deficit to get the extra inning win. My goodness, Vegas is two wins away from a championship. And another absolute classic. I wish I could jump into these things. Final game of the series at Red Rock Park, and it's the money. Coming out on top with a five-run win. New York looks to close out another series in six. Day baseball at Apple Field. The sleeveless jerseys just don't look nearly as good on the guys. I'll have to change that next year. Two outs, runner on third and the second for Ozzie Smith. Brings him in with a double into the left center gap. Slapper glute with the slapper just out of reach of the shortstop and the Wizard of Oz easily scores. Runners at the corners, two outs in the third for Blamo Tamale. The ground ball is just far enough away from Ozzie Smith to prevent any outs and get New York on the board with Juice Jackson coming to the plate. The double steal in play, New York able to tie the game from Jackson's little dribbler up the middle. Two outs, runner on third and the fifth for Ham Slamis. The 2-1 serving from Jeff Nelson is just a bit outside. Here comes Blamo Tamale, changes his mind and he's thrown out at third. This is our best hitter, Lloyd Cook, leading off the eighth. And he's gonna send this one on a ride, way out of here. Second deck, it's Cook's fifth homer of the postseason. Still in the eighth, Willie Bacon doubles with one on, and Vegas will have runners on second and third with one out for Windy Wheels, who's having a day. But Klaus DeGain strikes him out on three pitches. Brings up Ralph Blue, and DeGain gets him on four pitches. Bottom of the eighth, one on and two outs for Cutie Pie Memori Aoshima. On one pitch, takes Matt Gunn out of here. Gets New York the 4-3 lead. Klaus DeGain gets slapper glute to ground a second to end it. Then the money storm the field. And I don't think the crowd can take enough pictures of it. We had two of the three stars of the game, but it wasn't enough. None of our pitchers and eight total hitters made the top 10 for the playoffs. Still, I think it's safe to say your boy here knows how to draft a team and make the right moves. Can't wait for next year.